Okay, finding a comfortable spot. To begin with our Shuijiao hip and back warm ups. So, feet together and the hands laced to top of the head. We're going to begin by making nice big circles with our hips. First couple, pretty slow and relaxed. Make sure the pelvis is drawing a complete circle around your feet. And the head and chest moves the counterbalance. And changing directions. Again, the first couple nice and even. Focus on drawing those hips all the way around the hip around the feet. Okay, coming back to center, stepping out to a wider than shoulder width stance with the hands on the hip. And the focus here is drawing the pelvis back so the body can sink down with a straight back and the pelvis forward as you raise back up. Do 20 of those. Sink to lift, pelvis leading the way. You want more of a challenge, you can bring the hands to the center of the chest. Still focusing on keeping that back straight. More of a challenge still, you can bring the hands right behind the ears. Two more. All right, narrowing that stance just a little bit, a bit beyond core stance. Same thing with the hips. As the hips sink down, the body sinks. As the hips come forward, raising and reaching back. Sink to lift. The back is still straight as I sink down. Pushing the hips forward as I arch and raise back. Continue. Good, Eric. Maintaining that flat back as you sink down, hips forward as you raise up. Four more, everyone. Good, Pam. As you sink down, the arms relax, palm in. As you raise up, the hands turn, the palm out, 
as you draw back. And last one. Very nice. Widening that stance yet again. Back is once again parallel to the ground. As I twist, I'm going to look past my hand, back to the center, other side, look past the hand, and continue. Good. Uh, slowly back up. We want the feet to just about shoulder width. And we're going to do the same basic movement we did for our first exercise. Only now we're going to add a bit of dip with it. So as I draw back, some bend in my straighter leg. My body rolls through. Hips come up in a complete circle and roll. Hips circle forward, around, and back. And through. let's go try it together. One. Focusing on that hip circle. Never locking out your legs. Changing directions. Nice, slow circles the first couple. Make sure the hips are moving all the way around the legs, all around the feet. Keep going. Good leg, let the weight of your body carry you around and through. There you go, very nice. It's a, it's a little bit ballistic as you roll through to the other side. Good, Eric. Very nice, Craig and Pam. Okay, and shake that one out for a moment. Get my timer back. All right, next up, in a nice comfortable stance with the feet in parallel. Bring attention to the tape side leg. We're gonna take this hip and externally rotate it. Trying to draw a great big circle with this half of our pelvis. Back, in, forward, and around. For the first few moments, just pay, pay attention to the shape. Try to make your circle as smooth and comfortable as you can. And also try to make sure that it is a circle. It's very easy to make ovals. Once that basic shape is feeling more comfortable, start bringing on our three basic postural elements, starting with the feet. So the feet grab the ground just a little. And that should decrease the amplitude of your movement, welcoming more stability and structure to your lower leg. If grabbing with the feet makes everything feel kind of wonky, you can go ahead and let the feet go for a few rolls. And as you get comfortable, bring the feet slowly back online. Once the feet and the circle feel good, then gently draw the umbilicus towards the lumbar spine. Very slight abdominal engagement, maintain your pelvic stability. And from there, the head and neck lift very slightly towards the ceiling, 
drawing up from that cervical spine all the way up above. And switch legs. Now the opposite leg, first few arcs, just try to make a nice even circle. Once that circle is comfortable, adding in our foot grab. It's like an evil cat grabbing carpet. Slow it down a little to really feel that arc. Once the foot grab and the circle feel good, adding in that umbilical draw to the spine, and then finally that raising of the cervical spine towards the ceiling. Again, focusing on a nice, even circle. Okay, now as the hip rolls around and comes back, it's going to link into the other hip, which will now pull forward and draw back, changing hips side to side as we begin to draw our figure eight. Just like the single circle, first few evolutions, focus on making the shape relaxed and complete. One circle draws into the next. Once the shape is more secure, adding a foot grab. Once the body stabilizes from that, belly draw and finally cervical spine lift. All right, coming back to neutral and rest for just a second. Coming back to tape side, we're now going to do internal rotation. So back, around, and in. Back, around, and in. Just like external, find the shape of that circle first. Once the shape is comfy, adding in those three postural elements of the feet, belly, and neck. Three <laughs> technologies, all right. Resman. Now going from tape side hip internal rotation to non-tape side hip, same thing. Great big circles. And again, the circles feel good. Foot grab, belly draw, and head neck raise. And from here, drawing around and in, and then once again, passing to the other hip, beginning to ascribe that horizontal figure eight. Just as in single leg, get the shape down first, and then bring in the foot grab, belly draw, and neck. and continue for a moment. Good leg, trying to hit a bit more draw with the stomach. So you can really feel that foot movement traveling up the torso. Very nice.
Good Craig and Pam, playing with that shape, trying to keep everything nice and round in the base as you roll up. Morning, Laura. All right, so far so good. Relax for a moment. So now we're gonna go back to the external rotation for just a second, but this time placing your hands on your hips. Again, rolling the legs. Again, the arc is out this time. And I want you to feel for is that slight raise that occurs as the hip goes from forward to rolling back. Again, there's a little bit of a sink as the hip comes in and a little bit of a raise as it rounds and comes back. That's just due to the ball and socket nature of the joint. We want to identify that because our next few movements are gonna build off that natural rise and fall. So and find that lift. I'll exaggerate it a little so you can see a bit more. So lifting around, lifting around. After the lift feels good, try to identify the sink that goes along with it. As one side raises, the other side falls. Everyone's got a good start on that. Next up, take one of your hands and put it right on the upper rectus abdominals, so the big ab muscles in front. And I want you to feel what's happening in the stomach if the belly is not drawing to the spine. So draw control first. If there's no belly draw. You might feel some slight movement in the abs, but by and large, the muscles are fairly stagnant. If we add in those postural elements of the foot grab and the umbilical draw to the spine, all of a sudden there's a pretty dramatic shift that happens as I start to raise up and over through the abdominal muscles. Should I feel that for a few revolutions? And keep playing with that concept. Good. Is anyone not feeling this at all? A little bit April? Okay. So from the rolling out April, draw the umbilicus to the back and then push in right underneath the ribs. And as the hip comes around and through and lifts up, there's a pull that comes into the stomach that continues that lift up and through. And you want to identify right here as I roll back, the engagement occurs as I roll through. Engaging to lift, slight abdominal pull with it. Hip comes forward, abs engage the lift. Hip comes forward, abs engage just a little and lift. It's not a big flex, but it's enough that you can feel a little bit of draw through the muscles. Does that make some more sense? Okay. I'll work on it some more. Sometimes okay. it takes a while to feel what's going on. Totally, and this is a little bit subtle, um, but it's gonna make the next few movements a lot easier. So let's go back to that surface just a second more. Externally rotating, feeling the abdominal engagement, as we come around and lift, around and lift. Good, and watching me for a second. So what we're gonna play with now is our lifting and drawing exercise. What's happening here is the hips are rolling first. As the hip leads, that lead pulls the arm over. Hips lead, the hip lifts, arm follows. Hip lifts, arm follows. If I don't have any umbilical draw, the aesthetic becomes kind of mushy, right? There's not much structure supporting the upper body as it rolls. As I bring that belly online, all of a sudden I have that sphere to roll my shoulders and hips around. So again, out abdominal engagement, you see how the lines become a lot more straight. With that abdominal engagement, now I can create that round to play with. So as we all transition into lifting and drawing, Again, that first step is make sure the hips move first, the hips lift, arms follow. Hips lift, arms follow. Once that timing is down and the external hip rotation is feeling pretty good, then add in the foot grab and belly draw to the spine. And then find the raising of that head and neck to give all that force a place to go.
So again, the function of those three postural elements, the foot grab, belly draw, and neck lift, are to focus in your movements and help them to traverse from the lower part of the body into the middle and finally into the upper. And keep playing for a second. Okay, so for Craig and Pam, as you draw through, the hip lifts and the arm rounds and follows. The hand dives to the center, raises. So it's like I'm lifting up a very heavy object, using that natural roll of my body for each drawback. Good, reaching and pulling. Notice how there's space in my armpits. I never want to cut the arms off entirely. I always want that very little bit of runway to give me room to maneuver. Very nice, Laura. Looking good, Rachel. Eric, a little more draw back. So as the hip rolls back, it carries the arm with it. Good. Okay. And relax for a moment. So I want to hear what your all experience is worth this. Um, any questions so far? So Joey? Yes. One thing I'm working on is just maybe you have some guidance on this, is um, really not moving my arms very much. So like not using arm movement, but more trying to get the movement coming from my hip. Exactly, yeah. That's, that's absolutely one of the main focuses here. And it's a tough one, right? I mean, you, you see the arms move in any exercise and immediately the focus goes there because we're so used to telling stories about hands, right? But for internal going cool in particular, all the important stuff is coming from the hips. The hips set the base frequency, that base movement, and the arms just play off of that. As the hip rolls, the arms follow. If I go back to that internal rotation for slicing, the hips lift, the arms follow. It's not the arms leading the way, the base sets it up, whether it's internal or external, and everything on top just kind of follows suit. And so I'm, I'm just kind of letting my arms be a little ragdollish in a way. That's not a bad approach at all. And then from there, as you draw in that feeling in the abdominals, you can get that movement to come from the legs and get into the mid body, right? And then all of a sudden, this movement becomes accessible to the upper body. And that's a great big step. That's a hard leap to make. So if you're struggling there, don't worry. It's an it's okay place to kind of take some time and feel it out. But the things that helped me out the most was that umbilical draw in because not only did I then engage the musculature so I can more easily feel movement traveling through it, but also that umbilical draw helps bring that pelvis into neutral. If the pelvis is shifted posteriorly at all, the abdominal muscles become impossible to identify. As the pelvis comes back in, so kind of neutral, like the neutral spine, then that force becomes much more identifiable. Awesome. I'm breaking a sweat too, so I think I'm doing some good stuff. <laughs> Me too. Any other questions? I can't hear you, Laura, I'm sorry. That's okay. All right, so we've done external rotation. Let's take a look at slicing from internal rotation for just a moment here. You got a timer back so you don't get lost. Okay, so setting up our base, which again is rolling those hips inward, finding that internal figure eight. From here, identifying the natural rise and fall of the hips as it rolls side to side. Slowing it down can make that much easier. I'll exaggerate so it's easier to see. The hip rolls back, then up and over, back, up and over. The same kind of mechanic for activities like chopping wood. Draw up and slice, up and draw. Once again, placing the hand on those upper rectus abdominals. Try to feel the natural contraction and release of that muscle. 
as you roll side to side with that umbilical draw. If it's hard to feel, go ahead and slow down and just really focus on that belly button drawing to the spinal column behind it. It's not a big flex, but there should be a slight change in how the musculature feels as you roll side to side. From there. Quick question, Joey. So the, the muscle feeling on this one to me feels different. It feels more like a roll or a right. wave compared to the other one, which was a little bit more of a contraction. Exactly. And you can see this quick little tangent in the movements of build off of these two exercises, right? The ball rolling for external rotation is that very relaxed, have kind of constant roll. For internal rotation, you get that big round shape rolling through. There are very different body feels between the two, but the key is there is an abdominal engagement for both, right? And even though the two movements aren't exactly analogs for each other, they're in the same place and they both play a part to play with internal versus external rotation. Does that make sense? Awesome, awesome. So again, going back to the internal rotation with belly feel, And we now add on the hands. So as the tape side hip rolls back, the hip rolls and lifts first, the hands raise and follow, little finger side forward. As I continue that roll, they slice. Internally rotating, non-tape hip, hip lifts first, hands lift second, and roll through. Hip, belly, hands, slice. Hip, belly, hands, slice. For a lot of us, for quite a while, the movement was just hips to hands, right? And that would be the basic form, but with that belly step, you can really take that power from the lower and carry it and make it accessible in the upper. The belly is the catalyst. As the hip raises nice and relaxed, the hands also, see they're heavy, they're relaxed, the body turns, I slice with weight. Lifting, heavy and relaxed, feeling that weight as I turn to slice. The raising of the arms, I never break my own axial line, that's this line right here. I never reach behind it, rather my body turns and draws through. So there's always a concavity in my chest and a little bit of a splaying of my scapula in the back. Maintaining that nice round the whole way through. Hips first, belly draws to the back. I use that belly draw to raise the arms and through. And keep playing with that for a moment. Very nice leg. Good Pam, and as you slice Pam, it's that little finger Leading the way, hands raise up, relaxed. Little finger slices, raise, slice. So now there's a horizontal figure eight in the hips and a vertical figure eight in the palms. Just circles building on circles. And notice how I round to lift, that lift then carries through to the hands, the body turns and the hands draw through. Hips, belly, hands for raise, turn to slice. So we're always after that even cascade of movement from the feet traveling upward. Grabbing with the toes, belly to spine, head, neck raising, and a few more moments of this. Good. The weight of the arms, the weight of the arms, playing with the body's natural weight. The natural raise of the hips, that relaxed raise of the hips, pulls the arms up, and then gravity draws the arms down.
Good Rachel, good Laura. Very nice, everyone. Okay, relax for a moment. So any questions about how that foot draw travels through the hips, into the middle, and then finally makes its way to the shoulders? Or is that at least theoretically making some sense? A little bit? Any questions so far? Okay. So the key to this, um, along with all the hip rolling work, is just time and practice, right? If every day you do a minute rolling each hip one way, a minute the other, a minute figure eight, and then try to add on one of these exercises on top of it, the improvement will come very quickly, right? It's just you know, constant repetition, and more than just the aesthetic of the movement, paying attention to the body feel. I mean, this looks pretty much right, but all I'm doing here is swinging my shoulders, right? There's none of the hips, there's none of that belly draw, which gives me actual power. If I want to produce bodily with this, it's not enough to just swing the arms. This is as much as I'm ever going to get. If I want power to come from the ground, I have to draw from the ground, up through the middle, up through the arms, right? So that power can crash down. If there's no draw, all I have is gravity. There's nothing to assist that gravity. And so what we're doing here is trying to build all these elements online so you can practice them seamlessly one with the other and try to make that folly and that power expression as relaxed and subtle as possible, okay? So next up, we're gonna go on to our roll, the pressing, and then carry that into stepping for a moment. And if there's time, we'll do a little bit of work with Golden Spear, okay? So get some water for a minute and we'll start in about 30 seconds. If anyone has any questions, let me know. I think I got my mic now. Do I have my mic now? Yes, I can hear you. Hey, sorry. No worries. <laughs> yeah, no, I just love how you brought the belly into that. It's like, you know, after the hip roll, if I just focus on drawing in that um, navel to my spine, I can just feel that power. It's a huge difference, right? Yeah, and but I love how you broke it down. Oh, thank you. And what's nifty is we've been doing this all along, right? The whole time, those three postural elements are grab the ground, draw the belly, raise the head, neck, right? It's been kind of in our dialogue since the very beginning. But as you bring your focus to each one of those three places, it'll dramatically shift to the body feel and the aesthetic of your movement. And so as you train at home for this next week, you know, take a little bit of time and see just what foot grab versus not foot grab does. How does it feel? What does it shift? Just experiment with each of these and then kind of stack them together. What does foot grab and neck lift, foot grab and belly draw? Because if you don't have a baseline, it's really hard to identify what that new change is doing for you. And so the more you can kind of experiment with it, the deeper the feelings go and the more you can carry it forward and have fun with it later on. Okay? So let's go into our role. Starting with our great big, or, or great, great big orbiting circles. Hips go one way, hands go the other. Drawing in, belly and hands touch. Big space, draw in. Big circles, drawing back. Again, focusing on the big movements first. We're gonna find it down in just a minute here. Changing directions, big circles. And last one. Okay, so now as I change directions, my hands reach, my non-taped hip comes up, rolls, and as that roll travels back, I go into my taped hip, which is now gonna drill into the ground as my chest fills and I press. So once again on that side, the three circles pressing on the third, one, two, and on three, hands reach, hip comes forward, hip rolls, connect to that taped hip as I drill into the ground, and as I drill, I lift and press up, 
with my head and neck, creating that suspension, which fills into the circle that I press out. One more time. On three, one, two, and wrapping around for three. Hip comes through, round the front hip, drilling that back hip as I press out. Again, the hand position is a nice relaxed angle. I don't want to do, put undue pressure on the wrists. I want this to be a clean line of pressure as I drill out and through. Let's shift sides. One, two, and on three, the taped hip comes forward, rounds, and then drills into that back leg as I fill and press. And as I fill and press, this space starts the circle. As I drill on the ground, I transition it to a very slight oval. There's, now, there's an elasticity to that off long shape, which is now gonna carry me back around the other way for three. One, two, and on three, I round that non-taped hip, drill the taped hip as I press that circle to a slight oval, and then that elasticity draws me the other side. One, two, the taped hip rounds, the non-taped hip drills as it press, and back. One, two, and for three, roll to drill. And now one count, one move, as I go back across, right off here, drill, roll to drill, back the other side, roll to drill. The roll is in relation to the shape that front hip makes as it rolls back and connects into that back hip. The drilling is that feeling of engaging into the ground as that foot corkscrews into the ground, give me that pivot, which becomes that arm, that yin arm, pressing through on the opposite side. And other side, roll, drill. Roll, drill. Two more. Front hip rolls, back hip drills as I press. Keep going at your own pace. Good, Rachel. As you come through, watch my hands. As I roll that hip, the hands are coming close. As I turn, they're all ready together. As I drill, they lift in unison and press. There you go. Hands travel together, wiping off the table. As I round that hip, the hand comes up. As I drill, everything's already there. One more together. Roll. Round. Drill press. Very nice. Keep playing with that. What's that? What was I doing? Your arms weren't coming up at the same time. And so what you were doing was that head jump. You want to make sure that the hand, see as the hip rolls, the hand rolls with you. You want unified movement. And see now as I come up, everything compresses naturally. As I turn, I'm carrying that ball. As I drill, I press that ball through. So you have as much runway as possible, so you get as much bang for your movement as you can. Okay? Very nice. All right, Laura. Good, Laura. Making sure that you're sinking into that back leg a little bit more and leaning back a little less. As you come through, plumb line dropping into that back foot as you pivot to press. Okay, everybody, shake that out for just a second. Any questions for me before we go into the stepping? Yes, I have sort of an evolving amorphous question. Please, I love um, those. I've, I've been trying to pay attention to what the belly is doing throughout this. Yeah. And um, especially in moments when the hip comes forward, I don't know what 
belly engagement is supposed to feel like. And that transition into the next motion feels kind of awkward for me. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering how that how that motion should feel, especially in, in the hips. We make sure we're on the same page first, okay? So you're talking about from here on? Or from like here. Hmm? There, okay, gotcha. From here, yeah. Okay, so here there's a very slight engagement, just enough to maintain clean posture, right? As I come through to the movement and pull that hip, that hip pull has a feeling of draw to the opposite side. So as this hip rolls in, everything's pulling through cross body. And the sensation is almost like I'm doing a horizontal sit up, right? There's just a little bit of that cross body draw. And that can be a bit difficult to identify. So I would do, if I were you, April, is slow it down a little and see if you can identify as much feeling of the arm weight change in the middle as you can as you roll through. So the feeling in the stomach is going to be different here than it is as we reach to the side. And so I would first play with just that. Okay, here is more of a relaxed balance field of rex abdominals. Here, there's much more of a draw on the bent leg side. And then from there, as I roll up, that feeling transitions to the other side. As I roll neutral, it comes to the middle. As I drill, it goes cross body again from hip to opposite shoulder and press and creates a feeling again of the opposite side horizontal crunch. Does that at least kind of make sense? Yeah, I definitely feel it in the front. I feel the, the shifting, but I'm, yeah. I'm wondering when it's, when my hip is rotating backwards, mm -hmm. how that should feel. So this part? Which part is that? So right there, yeah, right? That part. Yes. Right. So what happened here, if you let the abs go, this all goes kind of relaxed and the press can be there, but it doesn't have that support from the base, right? This is the hard part to carry it through. So if you have that abdominal draw all the way through here, the roll up is good. As you draw up, use that coiling of the arm linked in with the rolling of the hip. As the shoulder and the hip roll together, it's easier to maintain a connected feeling through the belly and then draw that feeling up and try to move slowly enough that you never lose that, that feeling of abdominal engagement. If the belly feel goes away, just step back a few you know, parts of your rotation, find the belly roll again, and carry it as far as you can. And over time, the feeling will expand further and further, and eventually it will make it all the way. Thank you. That was helpful. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Again, it can be really hard to maintain a subtle body alignment through a great big series of movements, right? Because it's a new muscular engagement. But if you can carry it through this part, you have all the tools you need to do the whole thing. You just need to have the patience to do it bit by bit and just break down how the body feels transition stage by stage until you can create the whole shape. Right, but you're, you're well on your way. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, let's carry this into some stepping for a moment. So watching me first, from the roll to the press, what we're going to do now is draw into that leg. As we do so, the hands and the foot cross. They cross again as we step out. I roll that front hip, drill the back as I press, and then continuing, see how my foot turns? As I draw in, pulling my weight up, toe touches between the two feet, hands and feet cross, heel touches first, my hands are already in chamber, roll that front leg, drill, filling that space in my chest for the second, pull, draw up, hands and feet cross once, hands and feet cross twice, roll, to drill, to draw. Let's give that a try together. So pushing towards that tape side to begin with. The foot turns as the hands pull. As I draw, the weight fills that front leg. From that fill, the continued pull of the hands draws my hip or claw forward. Okay, feel that movement a couple of times. From that draw and pull, the hands continue their arc, pulling that foot up. The foot and hands continue their opposite arcs, just like when we were standing still. 
rolling that front hip, drilling that back hip, creating a slight elastic oval in the arms. From here, we're back weighted so I can turn that front foot out as I initiate my pull. That front foot fills, becoming the weighted foot. That pull pulls that taped hip up. The hands and hip continue their relative circles. Round that front hip, drill the back hip as I press. Hands and foot turn, pull, step, round to fill. Drawing up, step, round to fill. Let's try this again together. Take side, lead in the way. Foot turns, draw. Step, continuing that arm. Roll, fill. Foot turns, hands draw. Step, continuing those arcs. Roll, to fill. Good, a couple more of those at your own pace. Very nice, Rachel, using that round of the arm, following that round of the hip so everything can express evenly. All right, good job, Rachel. Again, don't lose your arms as you stretch. You're here, the arms and the body pull together. You're grabbing a rope, pulling yourself up. Whole body's engaged the whole time. Very nice, very nice. And the more you can gently utilize the abs, the less you need to use those bigger muscles to kind of force your way through, right? The movement comes to the middle, it sort of disseminates through everywhere else. The movement comes to the periphery, it takes a much harder engagement to pull from phase to phase. So for Golden Spear, right? It comes to that Bagua guard, in the form, there's that coil, then the step out, everything rounds up, and as the heel presses, the belly fills and the arms draw through. And just like in the other exercise we do today, that draw in pulls to the belly. As I step out, the belly fills, expanding in both directions, evenly towards the heel and towards the fist. If I focus just fist, my weight's here, there's nothing rooting it. I'm easy to off-center. If I press down as much as I push out, I get the strongly rooted base, okay? So let's try this all together. Tape side hand out, stepping back at a 45 with the other foot, draw. As the hand begins to pull into the hip, the foot draws in width, arms coil, palm side comes up, as I step out, filling evenly hands and foot. Draw. Foot follows. From the belly, expanding evenly, from the abdominal feeling, hands and foot. Draw. As I round here, everything coils into that center a little bit more as I press. Draw, focusing on the pull. As everything condenses, I focus on that rounding coil and then the expression. Draw, everything condenses, rolling, playing with that coiling spring to pressing out. Coil to press. Coil to press. Give that a try a couple times on your own. Any 
and continue with that for a moment. Good. Drawing in, play with that drawing up, press. It's coming along nicely. Any questions? I don't know whether this is important, but I noticed that when you step back and you pull your foot in with you, it looks like your maybe your your toes are closer to the ground than your heel, and I yes. end up dragging my, my heel across the ground trying to get it to Absolutely. So me. from that press, right, there's a drop, and I'm pulling that ball of the foot, and then the toe in, the toes touching midfoot, pressing out, and then the heel drop locks everything into place for this one. And there are other instances also in kicking styles where that heel drop kind of creates like that pressure panel that brings everything else up, right? And so the heel drop on one foot brings the other foot up and through. So it's not an uncommon mechanic. Um, it's just not a basic mechanic. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just thought if I'm dragging my heel, that might be a sign that I'm not doing something right. Or right, and again, in the, the issue with the heel drag, right, is I draw through, is it through here, it forces a lot of weight in that leg and also changes the angle here, which makes I can't use that whole body draw. As I draw from the toe, it comes into more of that cat stance and I can pull from the hip without compromising the angle of my low back and pelvis. Okay, you're, you're bending your knee more than I am, so maybe that's part of it. That can definitely be part of it. Start from a different angle real fast, April, okay? See, everything coils in. Yeah. Was that a little easier to see? Yeah, yeah, it was. Thank you. I'll, I'll play with that some more. Awesome, awesome. Again, I run, out of, I run out of room really fast. I'm just like having to constantly reset that one. Yep. Yeah. And for that, you know, like when I change my basement, um, I'll just do one, two, change direction, one, two, change direction, back and forth like that. And it's not as relaxing as doing a line of five to 10, but it'll at least get you know, the mechanics more in your body. Um, Lee Tai Chi is, it really is a master thesis on internal martial arts, right? It's what happens when Sheng Bagua meets Xing Yi, meets Yang Tai Chi, meets Lo Han. There's, all these elements going in here that on the surface make it an incredibly complex style. But the reason why I love it so much is that beneath all that, you get this kind of derivative layer where everything's the exact same thing. You know, it's can you pull from your feet? Can the power traverse the middle? Can you maintain that coil? And if the answer to those three things is yes, you can pretty much do every single movement in Li Tai Chi. It's just a different, you know, slightly different shape. But the base behind it's the same. And so if you find like the Golden Spear challenging or the roll to press challenging, don't worry about those so much. It's just spending a bit more time on those hip circles and that body feel rising up from the hip circles. Mm -hmm. Once you have that, that's your indicator of is a thing, you know, on balance or not on balance. And from there, we can do a whole lot together. That's Sound good? Cool. And also on Zoom, a nice aspect of Zoom is we can record ourselves. Totally. I mean, get into the feeling of it and then maybe record yourself to see you know, am I bending forward too much yeah. or? And you know, if any of you take videos of yourself practicing at home and you know, send them to me, I will take a look at them and I'll tell you exactly, you know, what I see. I'm always happy to help out in that way too. Oh, so you're so great, Joe. Uh, Thank you so much. Of course, you know, I, I want to be a resource as much as I can for all of you. So before we finish up, let's do just a couple minutes of standing and then I will get set for the Bogwa class. So starting with those feet together. 
feeling a lift cross body as the tape side leg becomes heavy and the weight pour is to fill. As we raise this leg, don't lift from the knee, rather try to feel the abdominals draw in and feel the hip lift first, lifting up and to the side. From that hip lift, the leg can raise smoothly and the body feels much deeper in the abdomen towards the psoas muscle. As we step out and the weight pours and fills to even. Take a second, let your body rock, don't worry, and then draw in that foot grab. From there, that slight belly draw, and then the raising of the head neck as we sink just a little, allowing those arms to raise. Notice that I raise, as I raise up, that belly draw means that my back maintains that nice natural neutral spine. If my hips roll back like this, I no longer feel my quads, all the weights in the knees, which is you know, not the ideal place for weight to be. So I want to maintain that abdominal engagement so my quads can do their job and my knees can avoid injury. Again, first two breaths, foot grab, belly draw, neck raise. Once that all feels pretty good, the next step is creating space in that chest. And for that, I knit those clavicle bones together, just drawing those long bones, just maybe you know a millimeter or two in. It's not a big shift, just enough to create that concave body feel in front. The fingertips gently draw together. Life in the hands, weight in the arms. The very point of the elbow, that olecranon right there, is the heaviest part of the arm, constantly drawing you down. The lift up is found that raising and rounding of the center. And hold. A bit more weight in the elbows, Eric. Good. Nice finger enga engagement, um, April and Laura. Very good lake. Good, Craig. You and Pam are doing great with this one. Make sure that belly engagement is always slightly there. Again, it's not you know, a hard pull. It's just enough that I can maintain that understanding of where my hips are in space. Good. Very nice, Rachel. A little more separation in the fingertips, Rachel. And make sure there's a little bit of a concavity right here where that pectoralis, that pectoralis minor, that muscle through here, inserts. You know, make sure there's a little bit of space to maintain and better create that feeling of round. Okay? That looks much nicer. Yeah, very good. slowly sink as the body gently rises. Feel your weight even between the two feet. The weight then pours back like a teapot pouring water into that tape side, freeing the other leg, drawing cross body to that deeper set of musculature as the leg lifts and sets. Arms raise. Body lifts, arms and body sink just a little. For more yang masculine energy, right hand over left. For more yin feminine energy, left hand over right. Hands to the belly, rolling that dantian nice and slow, three times each direction. Change directions. Relax down. 
All right. Nice job, everyone.